this is a great way, I think, for a veterinarian to consider offering services to their clientele is doing um, relatively basic feed bunk audits. And I think what I would include in my simple version of a bunk audit is hanging time lapse cameras to look at when feed is getting pushed up to get an idea of when cows are coming to the bunk and to monitor out of feed events at that dairy where cows don't have any access to any feed for more than say an hour or two hours at a time, because that's when you can start to see fluctuations in, in performance on a, on a herd level. So those are some of the components. And then the others are um, consistently monitoring feed consistency with what's dropped in the bunk. Welcome to the Dairy Health Black Belt Podcast. I'm host. I'm your host today, Luciano Cacheta from University of Minnesota, and I'm here today with Dr. Uh, Kirby Krogstad from the Ohio State University. He participated on our podcast uh, already, and this is uh, will be a, a different conversation we're going to have. Uh, at first time, we talk about her room and health, and this is a conversation that's very well related to it. We're going to discuss today some bunk management, which is a very practical uh, practical aspect to influence uh, room and health. Uh, uh, Dr. Krogstad, like, uh, I understand that you have some like extension component to your position that it, it's it heavily involved in this understanding and uh, helping people uh deal with or at least monitor bunk management, right? Uh, can you explain to us like a little bit of what you're doing, uh, your perspective on this topic? Yeah, I think um, when you're starting an extension program or you're trying to build something impactful, you want to make sure, I, at least from my perspective, that you're sticking to the major fundamentals that help a dairy um, be profitable with cows that have excellent welfare and excellent production. And I think one of the fundamentals that constantly needs revisiting and reworking is how to manage a bunk properly. Um, so that's something I've been working on with some of our dairies here in Ohio and, and have done a little bit of speaking and program promotion on uh, in, in the country over the last year is uh, how and what do we need to be doing to optimize the management of the bunk? And so, for example, here in Ohio, um, at least this pocket that I'm in, in, in Wayne County, we have um, a lot of dairies, but we actually have a lot of smaller dairies that maybe have issues with balancing um, labor availability, time management, and getting everything done in a day that they need getting done. And sometimes feed push-ups don't happen as frequently as we might want, um, or the feed timing isn't as consistent as we might want. <clears throat> so my program is really trying to drive home the idea that the fundamentals of feed time being stable day to day and, and a strategic feed push-up program that keeps that bunk full at the right time throughout the day will promote efficient production. Um, even if we're not pushing up every 90 minutes or every two hours, there's ways to do that strategically, still managing um, manage the bunk well and keeping your cows healthy. Wise Genetics turns podcast airtime into brand authority. We don't sell ads, we elevate voices. Curious how far your voice can go to become a reference in the industry and attract more leads? Scan the QR code and discover how we can turn your expertise into unmatched brand authority. Let's transform expertise into influence. Starting now. This is this is timely. Like the things that you mentioned, like nutrition and the diet is a huge, huge input and a huge cost, right? For the production. And labor is something that's getting harder to find and especially consistent, right? And so we have like this labor that you kind of cannot really control. It depends on fluctuation of the market. That's actually dealing with the biggest input you have in your dairy. So like it's, it's, it's sometimes it, it puzzles me why people don't pay more attention to this. Uh, how, how, what would you, you suggest that we should be measuring when we are talking about feed, a uh, feed management, uh, feed bunk management program? That's an excellent question. I think every dairy, every dairy should either dairyman or nutritionist or veterinarian. If a, if a 
this is a great way, I think, for a veterinarian to consider offering services to their clientele is doing um, relatively basic feed bunk audits. And I think what I would include in my simple version of a bunk audit is hanging time lapse cameras to look at when feed is getting pushed up to get an idea of when cows are coming to the bunk and to monitor out of feed events at that dairy where cows don't have any access to any feed for more than say an hour or two hours at a time, because that's when you can start to see fluctuations in, in performance on a, on a herd level. So those are some of the components. And then the others are um, consistently monitoring feed consistency with what's dropped in the bunk. So I, I really love using Penn State particle separators to monitor how consistent the mix was from the beginning of the bunk all the way to the end. And so if you have um, a stretch of a stretch of barn, I usually do a minimum of three shaker boxes along the feed bunk. If you have larger barns with you know three or 400 cow pens, you can do five or six locations along that feed bunk and get an idea of is that particle distribution across those seeds of the shaker box similar site to site. And if it's not, then you might have either an operator error. Maybe that mixer is not mixing long enough or is not adding ingredients in the proper order. Or do you have a wagon issue? Are your kicker plates worn down? Are the forage restrictors worn down? Are the knives in the wagon worn down? All of those things can contribute to poor mixing um, and increased variance across that bunk. So those are the components I generally include. And I think any farmer or clinician or nutritionist could implement in relatively uh, with relatively limited time input is um, cameras for a week or two to get an idea of how much uh, feed pushup is occurring, when it's occurring, when it's not getting done, and how those out-of-feed events are happening, along with the shaker boxes to get an idea of how that um, how that TMR is actually coming out of the wagon and whether it's coming out of the wagon that we wanted to. Because we can argue till the day is till, till the day is over about how many grams of Choline, methionine, and lysine, and MP these cows need, but if, if they can't reach it, the answer is they have zero grams. <laughs> so that's what that's why I find this to be a, a topic I'm fairly passionate about. Maybe it's even on the papers there, but it is not being offered to the cows because some of it is like at the bottom of the wagon, never got mixed or improper, right? Like, yeah, that's that's super important. Um, you've made a comment about like the cameras and like at some point you, you said like one or two hours without feed in front of them. Like, do you have a recommendation? Like if someone put a camera, uh, one thing that I personal experience, uh, you ask a person how the push-ups are happening and you put a camera there and you find out that that's not what's happening. That's one thing <laughs> that it's eye opening to everyone. But, uh, if you have a recommendation, for example, say one or two hours, but you have a recommendation for someone's like, if you have a camera there, look at it and see how long your cows are without feed. Hopefully it's zero, but if what's something that they could strive for? Yeah, I think the, so I'm, I'll, I'll turn this around a little bit. I think the way I would implement or the things I would look for using camera footage for, for the barn is whatever you program you have in place or protocol you have in place is how it how is your staff or your team adhering to that protocol. So the first step, if I'm going to give a recommendation, is if you feed cows, do you have a written protocol for how you want your cows fed and how often you want feed pushed up and at what times? If you don't have that, you need to start there. Then you implement that program with yourself, your staff, your family, whoever does the feeding. Then you can start using those cameras in a more effective manner because you can use that written protocol as the template. And, and I say that because there are dairies where you might have the robot pusher that can push feed every 90 minutes or two hours or whatever the frequency. But in some of the smaller dairies that those robot pushers don't always pencil out. It's hard. It's a tough expense to really pony up and do. So they're limited on time and labor. So what strategic push push-up times do they need to write into their protocol? You know, and in that case, I would say if you're limited on time, you know, you need to drop feed at around the same time every day, get a feed push-up within two hours, 90 minutes to two hours of that initial feed drop, and then push up feed while push up feed in such a way that when the cows come back from the parlor, there's an empty or a full bunk in front of them. So like the, that's like the minimum program, but whatever protocol you write, then you can use the cameras to ensure compliance to that protocol. Um, that I, I, that's how I would implement a program like that, which doesn't exactly address your question, but it's a little roundabout way to get there. <laughs> but I think that's a much better, much better approach, right? Like, cause you want to have like the times, like the, one time or a benchmark and people get bugged on that. So 
uh, exactly. I think it was great the way you phrased it. Oh, thank uh, you. I wish uh, I wish we had more time. Like it goes really fast. But before we go, I would like to like what's one thing that you suggest producer or the allied industry on helping us improve bunk management overall? Yeah, I think we need to have more dairies with established written protocols for feed for feeding with which would include mix time, ingredient mix order, um, and any other details that are relevant to that particular dairy. And then a, a protocol for feed push-ups. It needs to be written down so that you can use that as a tool to train staff and to ensure protocol adherence to make sure your dairy is reaching its maximum performance. Okay. Yeah. It's not, so from all this, one of the key messages to, to take to people is like consistency and uh, this uh, availability of this protocol to make sure we are consistent, right? Like that's very important. Uh, thank, yeah, thank you for your time. I really appreciate you participating with us again. Uh, it's always enlightening to have you uh, participate. Always good stuff coming out. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have you back in the future when you're getting more stuff out and more research. Uh, I hope so. See. Yeah, that's the plan, right? Like always keep moving. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, this is the, the podcast episode for today. Uh, this is what we have for the Black Belt Dairy Health Black Belt podcast today. Uh, this is presented and uh, supported by Wisenetics. Uh, thank you for all of you for joining us. Subscribe to the channel, uh, like the episodes, send us your feedback. It's always important to get to hear what you think. Uh, how you like the program, how did it address some of your questions. If you have more questions, send us questions. We can definitely get in touch with the, the Dr. Karlstad to ask him more questions and also to know what you want to hear in the future. So uh, leave us some feedback, leave us some comments. Uh, this is Luciano Cacheta for the Dairy Health Black Belt podcast. Thank you.